Hey guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to install TrueNAS Scale on a TerraMaster F4 423, and I will probably only screw this up a few times along the way. But before we get into all of that, here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. I've been partnered with Linode for quite a while now because it's a great place to host just about anything you could want to host. Need a dedicated space to host an app? Linode has you covered with more than 100 pre-built apps that can be installed with just a couple of clicks. Want to develop an app on your favorite flavor of Linux? Linode has you covered there too with more than 30 different options to start with. Need to do some pen testing on your own network or app? Install a Kali Linux setup in just a few clicks to get started with testing your own security. You can also host a Docker setup, a Kubernetes cluster, and more with just a few clicks. From hosting a single website to complex multi-cloud deployments, find enterprise level capabilities like object storage, Kubernetes, and GPUs at a 30 to 50% lower cost than the major cloud providers. Be sure to check out the link in the video description to get $100 in free credit for 60 days to see what you can do with Linode. Okay, so this is the TerraMaster F4 423. It has an N5095 uh, Intel processor. Uh, it comes by default with four gigs of DDR4 RAM. Uh, I've currently got 16 gigs in there that I had laying around, but uh, the nice folks over here at Sabrent uh, sent me two 16 gig sticks that I'm gonna throw in there. So we'll have a total of 32 gigs of storage for this device. And uh, each of these drives is currently populated uh, with uh, an eight terabyte drive in each one, so a total of 32 terabytes. I've also got a one terabyte uh, NVMe cache drive in there. I also believe that one is from Sabrent. Um, I'll have to double check that. But uh, the, the TerraMaster device was provided by TerraMaster. Again, the, uh, the RAM here uh, was provided by Sabrent. I bought the hard drives off of eBay. Uh, I'll try to put links to everything in the description. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what it's gonna take to get our new operating system installed on here. Okay, so to simplify things a little bit, to, to make this a little bit more expeditious, I've already taken uh, the back panel off. Of course, there it is. Uh, and if we take this up and move some stuff out of the way that was propping that up, uh, here on the back, uh, here we can see uh, what the back of that looks like with our two uh, two and a half gig ports, our couple of three USB 3 ports and an HDMI port, and of course our uh, barrel jack port for power. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and tear this thing apart. Uh, hopefully it'll come apart fairly easily. There it goes. Sometimes these are a real pain to get apart. In order to do this, what I'm gonna have to do is take out this USB right here. Oops. So we're going to put a different USB uh, in here right now. This is actually what the system looks to boot from is this little USB drive right here. Uh, if you're gonna do this, be careful when you take this out, it is kind of crammed in there. Um, but this is, I don't even know if it says on here what size it is, it doesn't. Uh, but I've got some USB drives laying around that we're gonna plug into here uh, once we get our USB prepared. Um, and then uh, we should be able to boot from this. But first uh, we want to uh, make sure that we get our RAM upgraded. I lied, this is a silicon power. Uh, a terabyte or uh, one terabyte NVMe drive there. This supports two. There's another slot right here. Uh, I don't have that currently populated, obviously. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and swap out the RAM. So our first stick is right here, like so. And while we're here, I'll go ahead and put this first stick of Sabrent 16 gigs right there, just like that. And if we come in, there's another spot uh, right here. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to pick that up on camera, but there's another one right there that I'm gonna go ahead and pop out as well. Okay, so a little editing magic later. We've got this other stick installed in here. Uh, if you run into an issue uh, where it just doesn't wanna work with you or you get tired of fighting with it, take out those four screws. This just comes off and then you can go ahead and install that. Uh, then you can go ahead and get everything lined back up. Uh, and just make sure that you get uh, this uh, daughter board uh, expansion card lined up. Before you put it all back together and then put your four screws back in, you'll be good to go. Okay, so this is the USB drive that came out of our TerraMaster. Uh, this is the one that originally had TerraMaster OS on it or TOS or whatever you wanna call it. Um, and so this is the drive that we're going to replace it with. We're gonna put TrueNAS on there and uh, get it installed into that same spot that we pulled this other one out of. And then we'll go ahead and get uh, TrueNAS installed on our TerraMaster F4423. Now that we've seen the hardware we're going to use, let's create our bootable media so we can install TrueNAS Scale. Okay, so of course we're gonna need a couple of things to make this work. We've got our option between TrueNAS uh, Scale or TrueNAS Core. Um, and I I'm actually not going to use Core. Originally I thought I was going to, and I was wrong because uh, Scale has uh, Docker and Kubernetes support, uh, whereas uh, Core, Core doesn't. So, so we're gonna download Scale. Uh, we can just come up here and down click Download Scale 
And then, no, thank you, I've already signed up and click that right there. Um, well, download stable, you've got the option for a release candidate, but uh, I like to use stable versions of things whenever possible. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and let this download. While this is downloading, we can talk about the other thing we're gonna need, and that will be uh, some software to move the ISO from your, your computer over to your ISO to make it bootable. Uh, you can use either Belina Etcher, which is what I'm gonna use. However, I know a lot of people like to use Rufus. So uh, either of those should be a good option. Again, I'm gonna use Belina Etcher to get TrueNAS scale set up on my bootable USB. So our download here is done. So I'm gonna come over here to uh, Belina. I'm gonna select my file. Uh, here you can see that I had core and that's not the one we're gonna use. So I'm gonna do scale. I'm gonna select my target, which will be this uh, USB drive here. I'm gonna select, click select, and I'll click flash. Once this is done, we'll go ahead and get the USB put into our, uh, into our Terra Master device, get it booted up and get that installation process started. Okay, so our flash has completed. Uh, so now we can go ahead and remove our USB from our PC here and get it plugged in to our TerraMaster device. Okay, so now that we have created our bootable USB device here, what we're gonna do very, very carefully is come into here and plug this right back in. Again, be very, very careful uh, to not uh, bend anything or break anything uh, like I feel like I'm about to do here. There we go. Nice and gentle, that's a perfect fit. So again, I highly recommend these SanDisk USBs for this. Uh, once we've got this, uh, we've got a couple of options. We could put this all back together and uh, and, and just call it good, but I, I want this USB drive back when I'm done. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put this back over in my rack and get it hooked up so that we can remotely access it. Okay, so here we are. We're sitting kind of in front of, in front of my rack here, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our power and we're gonna plug that in like so. We've got our network cable here as well. We're gonna go ahead and plug that in. Uh, we're only gonna plug in one cable, even though it has the ability to plug in two. Uh, and then of course we need to plug in a USB like that and an HDMI again so that we can have that remote access like so. And then of course we'll wanna get this off the ground so that it's not sucking uh, air <laughs> through this carpet here. Uh, but then at that point we can jump over to our desktop and uh, start the installation process. Okay, so now we can reach over here and press the power button like so. With our bootable media having been created now, let's get over to the installation process. So I'm gonna start hitting delete on my keyboard here so that we can get into the, uh, into the boot options for our TerraMaster here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, arrow over to the boot option. And here we've got uh, some, our, our boot order uh, down below. You can see that our first boot order option here is NVMe. Um, that is because I screwed up on a previous install, so I need to change this to USB. Um, and then I actually need to go down to this USB option down below. And we wanna make sure that our boot option is enabled. Uh, it may be disabled if that's the case, just make sure that it is enabled Go ahead and hit the escape button, and then we can go over and click save changes and exit, and click yes. And now we can start our TrueNAS scale installation by clicking enter. Okay, so what we wanna do is click install and upgrade. There are of course other options, but we're gonna go with option number one. And here we've got uh, all of the different drives that are available. Um, of course, we've got our, our four eight terabyte drives as well as our one terabyte NVMe drive. So that's the one I'm gonna select by clicking the uh, spacebar in that spot and then clicking enter. So I'm gonna go with a fresh install on this. Originally I installed core and realized that's wrong. Uh, so we're gonna do a fresh install just to make sure that everything installs properly. I wanna go ahead and format the boot device again, just to make sure that everything uh, installs properly. Do I want to proceed with the installation? The answer to that for me is yes. We're gonna give it a password and we'll click enter. It's asking, do we wanna create a 16 gig swap partition on the boot device? Yes, we do. Okay, so it says the TrueNAS installation on NVMe 0 and 1 has succeeded. Please reboot and remove the installation media. So we're gonna go ahead and click okay. And then what I wanna do is click on uh, shut down the system so that I can uh, make sure that I go over there and get that USB removed from the device. So I actually removed that USB off camera, but I thought this would be a good time to just kind of interject and say, if you're not already a channel member, a patron, or a member over at dbtech.fans, now's a good time to go join one of those platforms so that you can get access to a bunch of my content with no baked in ads and no sponsor spots and no YouTube ads, just down to the nitty gritty of the video. 
But with that said, let's get back to the video. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and boot back up. I'm going to start tapping delete on my keyboard again so that I can go in and change the boot order uh, as to not run into any kind of issue uh, with the boot process. Okay, so now again, what we're gonna do is go back over to the boot option here. We're gonna change the boot option from USB device to NVMe. Uh, then we're gonna come down to the uh, UEFI NVMe drive BBS priorities. And again, here, this one says disabled. So we wanna go ahead and make sure that that is enabled. We'll hit the escape key. We'll go over to exit, save changes and exit, click yes. So now it's saying, hey, let's go ahead and boot TrueNAS scale. So this is why I actually wanted to record uh, the actual boot up process is because that first time that it boots, it's going to go through a bit of a process. The here it says it may take um, uh, some time, five-ish five, five -ish minutes or so. Uh, and I just wanted to make sure that we see this so that if you don't see this, uh, you'll know why it may take several minutes before your dashboard becomes available. A few moments later. Okay, so now we've got uh, a new console setup screen here. The web interface or the web user interface is available at 192.168.0.48. We also have an HTTPS option there, uh, or we can change some of these other settings. But what we're gonna do is jump over to my desktop and take a look at our new dashboard. So the installation process of TrueNAS was actually pretty simple. So now let's get logged in and start configuring our storage. Okay, so here we are on our new TrueNAS scale dashboard. Our username will be root and our password will be whatever it was we set up during the installation process. And here we go, here is our dashboard. We can see that we've got 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, we can see how much is free, how much is in a ZFS cache and how much is dedicated to services. We can see that we've got an Intel Celeron N5095 at two gigahertz, four cores uh, running at 58 degrees Celsius. Um, and at this point, I think what we wanna do next is actually go into storage and we wanna create a new pool. So here we've got all of the different pools that are available. I'm gonna call this um, uh, storage because I don't know what else to call it. We could if we wanted to encrypt it. I'm not going to though. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check all of these boxes. So we're gonna use all four of our eight terabyte drives and click those over like so. And then we've got some options. It defaulted to RAID Z2, which will use um, basically half of these drives as redundancy. And that's super safe and probably the way you should go uh, if you've got that much uh, storage available and you wanna go that route. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just do RAID Z. Uh, so that we'll have one of these drives for redundancy uh, in case something goes wrong. So uh, we won't have as much safety, but uh, we'll have uh, uh, about 50% more storage going from about 14 to about 21 terabytes of hard drive space there available using RAID Z versus RAID Z. Two. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create. Uh, it says the contents of all disks will be erased. So we're gonna say, okay, that's fine. Create the pool. And there we go. Our pool is set up. It is online. We've used 11.44 megabytes and we've got 21.01 uh, tibby bytes, I guess, is the more correct way to put that. So at this point, we've got our first data set uh, configured, I suppose you could say, but the problem is we can't actually do anything with this. You know, if I open up um, an Explorer window there and put in the IP address, uh, nothing happens. So what we're gonna do is actually come over here uh, to the right side of our storage data set, the one we just created. We're gonna click the three dots over here on the right. We're going to add a data set there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and call this, let's just call it media, because I'll probably put some movies and TV shows and that sort of stuff on there. Um, and then we can put comments uh, and we can adjust this kind of stuff as necessary, but the default settings are fine based on, on, on my experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save here. And then if I come in here and I look at uh, edit permissions or view permissions rather, uh, here we can see that um, we've got some permissions here. Now notice that there's a pen tool up here and edit button there. But if we come up to here and go to view permissions on the on the storage, um, there's no edit. So that's we couldn't do anything with that. So that's why we added this kind of sub data set here. Now, let's actually come back over to here. Again, nothing. So what we're gonna do is come over here to shares. Uh, our SMB shares is where we're gonna go next. Uh, here we can, if we click, uh, we click this, there's nothing there. So we're gonna click on add. Um, we're going to, we're gonna call this media. Uh, like we did before, and we're gonna drop down to storage and then into media. There shouldn't be anything further than that down, and all of this should be fine. Uh, but for the sake of just testing to make sure that our shares are working, I am going to allow guest access for this, like so, and we'll scroll down and click on save. 
And now that should be available. So let's come back over to here and put that back in. There's our media. So let's see if we can uh, create a new folder. Nope, we cannot. So what we're gonna do, uh, let's take a look at our advanced options. We've got to allow guest access. So what we wanna do next is actually come back to storage, uh, come over to our media uh, option under storage. We're gonna come over to here. We're gonna do edit permissions. We're gonna do, again, edit there. Um, and I just wanna give uh, everybody read and write access. Um, so we'll go ahead and click on save. And then let's see, folder, there we go. Now we can um, create new files and folders uh, just like so. And if I want to, of course, I can delete those. So there you go. There is a quick and easy way to install TrueNAS Scale on a TerraMaster F4 423. I'm sure this would work on other devices from TerraMaster, but uh, this is what I had uh, available to me. So this is what we used for this video. In future videos, we will take this installation a bit farther, but what I'd like to hear from you is what I should do next. What uh, kinds of topics revolving around TrueNAS would you like to see me cover in upcoming videos in this little series? Let me know in the comment section down below Low. But with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I do want to thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I will hopefully see you in the next video.